Hi guys, as you get ready to um, enter our third and final genre of drama, I want to give you a little crash course in what drama is, where it comes from, and sort of how we are supposed to interpret it as a literary form. So drama begins in ancient Greece. This goes back to Socrates and Aristotle, and it uh, began <laughs> alongside rhetoric, which we discussed in nonfiction. And so this was, this really came out of an appreciation for oral storytelling. You know, in these parts of history, and a lot of history, the average person couldn't read um, or couldn't read very well. So oral storytelling is a really important part of culture and the way that we share narratives. Now, <laughs> arguably speaking, drama is the precursor to many of the most popular forms of entertainment today. TV, film, um, video games even, these sorts of things are all sort of preceded by this performative tradition of literature that began in ancient Greece. And these ancient Greek plays looked very different than um, the plays <clears throat> or films that we would see today. Um, all the actors were men, so men played male characters, female characters, children or gods, and they wore masks. <laughs> very sort of... Um, uh, <sighs> insert adjective here. I don't know how to describe them. Very sort of uh, bizarre, almost looking mess. It was a very different type of performance. But remember, this is ancient Greece. They didn't have a lot of, they didn't have a lot of um, technology for set design, props, costuming, all of that. And all they had were men. So these, that was sort of their tool to adapt these different characters for performance. This was a really important part of culture. Um, these plays were typically um, about religious or moral principles um, or even sort of offerings to a, to a deity, uh, and that was the origin of it. Now fast forward a few hundred years to what many would consider to be the Renaissance of drama, and this is Elizabethan England. Um, probably the most famous playwright of all time, if not the most famous English writer of all time, William Shakespeare. Um, this is his era, and at this point they still are limited in the elements of production in the set design and the costumes. There's still only men in performances. But they did have a few more options, and this is where arguably drama really begins to take shape as a art form. Um, or probably one of the more recognized ways in which drama takes shape as an art form. There are plenty of artful Greek tragedies. But uh, Elizabethan drama took these sort of religious plays and adapted them into um, the histories. So you have things like King Lear, and and they also adapted them into tragedies. So Romeo and Juliet, Hamlet, Macbeth. Some of the most foundational stories of our our tradition is, uh, are born out of this period of time when uh, it becomes not only an important part of culture, but a form of entertainment and, a for and an intellectual endeavor in Elizabethan England. Now, <laughs> fast forward a few more hundred years, um, 1879, um, Henrik Ibsen publishes The Dollhouse, which is a drama about a housewife. And previously, drama had to do with um, the sort of higher status figures or, you know, it involved the gods and kings and queens and noblemen and, and these sort of characters that may not have been entirely relatable to people. And modern drama was about real life. It was about people like you and I. And that began with the dollhouse uh, all the way up until today. And so Trifles is a good example of that sort of early modern drama that addresses issues that the average person can relate to. Um, as with modern drama, you also got, uh, you also have a lot more technology, a lot more set design, props, technology, um, stage design, those sorts of things. And if you carry that all the way up until to today's drama, you know, there's all sorts of creative angles in which drama happens. You know, there are still performances of Hamlet and, and um, Oedipus, which goes back to ancient Greece. There are still performances of those things today, but because of all this sort of huge legacy of performance, we've been able to adapt them and perform them in different ways. Um, you know, Disney's The Lion King is Hamlet with animals. So these sorts of dramatic stories are something that, even if we may not necessarily appreciate them in their purest form, um, they're highly influential to um, our understanding of literature and to the way we uh, entertain ourselves with stories today. A um, couple of features of drama to watch out for. Um, first of all, drama doesn't have a narrator in the same way that literature does. Literature requires somebody to tell us the story, the point of view. 
Drama doesn't have that, typically speaking. It's more of an objective POV situation where you're watching things unfold. So the way that the you know the insight we have into characters minds and things like that that all changes um you'll also see stage directions in drama these are usually in brackets and um these are usually signals for blocking uh how they move around stage sometimes they'll be emotional stage directions but as with all performed literature, I encourage you to watch a performance alongside your reading of it because the actor performance um, is, of course, subjective, but it's also going to be part of the interpretive experience of, of this form of literature. Now, how do we hear characters' internal thoughts? Well, we do have monologues, um, and a monologue is just a, a sort of a speech that one character gives to sort of reflect or, or to convey those sorts of things. But a lot of the characterization that happens in drama happens in a very organic way. We see these characters and how they act and how they move and how they talk and and those sorts of things are going to inform what we perceive these characters to be just as much if not more so than the text so it's important to keep that in mind the performative aspect here is really really important uh, as you read this uh, uh, Susan Glaspell's trifles I encourage you to keep this sort of long tradition in mind and sort of how these things began as these sort of very philosophical um, moral endeavors and sort of became this era uh, or this form of entertainment that is really a precursor to a lot of our entertainment today, but still carries a lot of that emotional or moral significance. There's still a lot of messaging to be interpreted, and, and drama in a lot of ways, like all literature, reflects the anxieties, values, uh, principles of the culture in which it was produced, and Susan Glaspell's Trifles is no exception.